Greetings, friends, and welcome to another time of reflection. I'm coming to you from the studios of Faith Temple Assembly of God in Montego Bay, Jamaica. Ray! Yes, we're so glad to have you with us today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I can see the smiles on your faces. Yes, keep them smiling. Praise God. And for those of you who are joining us on Facebook and YouTube from the diaspora, let me greet you in the mighty name of Jesus and say thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. I'm Lorraine Chisholm. Yeah, I'm sitting in for my bishop, the Bishop Conrad Pitkin, and I am thanking him for the privilege of being able to minister in this form and this fashion and on this platform. May God bless you today. Stay with us for the next few minutes as we reflect on the word of God together, as we talk, as we grow, as we enlighten each other and you cheer me up and I cheer you up. Please remember that whilst we're going through the program, we're expecting you to call. Don't just sit and listen, you know, but call. Call and tell us how you're doing. Call and tell us if you had a good week. Call and tell us, would you like us to pray for you? Call. And if you have a praise report, then by all means, give us the opportunity to celebrate with you if God has done something great for you. We want to hear the testimonies, for that's how we overcome, by the word of the, the Lord and by our testimonies. Testimonies. All right. Also, please remember you can make contact with us on www.faithtempleaog.org and on the website. It will give you all the information you need as to how to make contact with us. Praise God. Please call us, as I said, and the numbers are 876 952 3436 and 876 979 68. Five, six. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you. Come on, let's sit and have a cup of tea together. Mm -hmm. You know me and the tea thing. Thank you so much. Join with me right now then as we move forward without further ado and let us enjoy this worship medley. And it is called Only a God Like You. See you in a moment.
enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed that song. It really touched my heart. I pray that it soothed your soul as you listened and that it drew you a little closer to the Lord in this time of reflection. Let us pray together. Father, we just thank you. Thank you for the closeness of your spirit. Thank you that you are right here. Thank you, Father, that we've got the opportunity to kneel and to pray to only a God like you, the only self-sustaining God the only God that we do not have to clean and put up and take down and polish and you sustain yourself, our one true God. And so, Father, we thank you today for sitting in our presence. Thank you for making your spirit available to us. Father, as we reflect, I pray that you'll utilize this time to minister to us. Lord, help us to give you the opportunity to minister to us so that we at the end of this reflection may be blessed by what you have said to us by what you have done through us by the fact that your presence sits with us and that you succor us and that you you still our spirits that we may hear your still small voice bless every person who hears my voice today bless their hearts lord god renew their minds transform their lives and father i pray that your peace which passes understanding will take them to a place in you where they will be satisfied lord that their soul is resting in your bosom lord i pray today let no weapon that is formed against us today distract us let it not draw our attention to anything else except to your word which brings light into our lives. We bless you now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord, reflectors. It's so good to be with you today. I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, oh my God, I hope you're having a wonderful, happy September. Did I say that to you as yet? No? Well, happy September. And for all the parents, happy back to school. And for all the students, I'm sorry. I know it ain't all that, but you know, Happy back to school. Make the most of it. These are the days you're going to say later on that those were the good old days. Yes. But I pray that your September has started with a bang and that you are seriously having some great plans to be purposeful and to do the best you can and to excel. And parents, give God the glory that yes, our students are going to excel. We are going to regroup. I know everybody is really suffering from having been thrown off by the pandemic and the time we've lost. 
I'm completely freaked out by that. I, I'm still trying to get into my head the fact that children have lost two years of their, their study lives and their spiritual formation lives by this pandemic. But our God is able. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. That because God is able, we can stand firm. So let's go to scripture. Yep. And my scriptures today, I'm, I'm taking it from two different Pauline, Pauline chapters. So the first one is 1 Thessalonians, no, 2 Thessalonians, sorry, chapter 2. And I'm going to read verses 13 to 16. There you go. Yep. Stand firm. And if you're an OD type Christian like me, um, you would be reading the King James Version and it would say stand fast. But that, they mean the same thing. I'm reading from the English Standard Version today. So if it's a little different from the one you have, that's okay. Just follow through with me. All right. So verse 13 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. But we ought always to give thanks to God for you for you brothers beloved by the lord because god chose you as the first fruits to be saved through sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth to this he called you through our gospel so that you may obtain the glory of our lord jesus christ so then brothers stand firm and hold to the traditions that you were taught by us either by our spoken word or by our letter. Verse 16. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. And that's 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 13 through 16. And now Philippians chapter 4 and it reads Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. I entreat Eudoa and I entreat Sintachi to, to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, keep these women who have labored, help these women, sorry, who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement, and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. And verse 8. So finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. And the God of peace will be with you. Amen and amen and amen. These were the words of Paul to the Philippians. And first we discussed, I read the words of Paul to the Thessalonians. Now, as I said, my topic is stand firm. You know, um, I was, I had a, a members meeting with one of our churches last night and I was saying to them that in the days in which we are now living, the days of trials and tests, the days where, you know, everybody's kind of, everybody's on edge. I don't know how else to say that. Everybody's on spiritual edge, financial edge, emotional edge. People are just on edge. Uh, you know, people who used to be nice, calm people, calm spirited people are now really on edge, anxious, concerned, and it's not that people want to be like that. It's that we've, we're in a, 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 I don't know, a time of life. I don't know how else to say that. We're going through a period of life where people have been through much and are on edge. But Paul, to the Thessalonians and the Philippians, spoke a strong word. 
And that is the word that I would like to use to, in, to reflect on and encourage our hearts today. That yes, you know, we are, we are going through some billows. We are going through some ups and downs. And um, the tests of time are, are tremendous. Um, if you read the newspapers, if you look at social media, don't even bother look at social media. My friend, can I tell you, sometimes I look at social media, it's like, what is going on in the world? People are just really outright crazy. Stuff they say, how they talk to each other and about each other, it's like, why are these people so unkind and unpleasant? And so, you know, they say hurting people hurt people. And you, you, you look at these things that are going on in life and you know that there are many people who are hurting and because they're hurting, they lash out, you know. And so we have got to look into the word of God and, and, and use the word of God to get ourselves out of this, this scenario, out of this state. Because the devil is really having a good time. He's really enjoying the confusion and the tests and the trials and, and the disgruntlement and the disagreements and, you know, just people just giving up and 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 i have not heard of you know the amount of suicides i've heard about lately have and suicides where nobody expected it people just upped and just you know knocked themselves off and their loved ones are left behind wondering what happened how did this happen but i'd like to encourage us today as we reflect on the goodness of god and as we reflect on the fact that no matter what is happening, we are in a kingdom that cannot be shaken. So stand firm. Here Paul is saying to the, to the Thessalonians, and he's talking to them that, you know, even though we're anticipating, if you look at verse chapter 2 and just go back above what I read, you will see that Paul is talking about the, t the end time is coming, the coming of the lawless one. Um, by the activity of Satan, with all power and false signs and wonders, and with all wicked deception, that's verse 10, for those who are perishing, because they refuse to love the truth, and so be saved. Therefore God sends them a strong delusion, so that they may believe what is false, in order that all may be condemned who do not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Hear me, these are days where people have pleasure in unrighteousness the people around us they are enjoying the sin they're in hello even the Christians you know I was at church yesterday and I was saying with righteous indignation I'm sorry if I come off real strong but you know sometimes these things really bother my spirit I was saying some people are just glad that they no longer have to come to church it's like yeah you know the pandemic and covid and you know i no longer have to come to, and it's like happy they're having a happy party i no longer have to go to church and uh, i mean what is going on and here the bible is telling us that because the 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 the, the, the spirit of lawlessness is already at work people think it's okay to be lawless, it's okay to not want to go to church. It's okay. You have been saved for countless years. And now you're using a pandemic which is petering out, praise God, as an excuse, as a, a, what you believe to be a reason to not assemble ourselves together. But the Bible here is saying that because you would not believe the truth, because God is saying to you word after word over and over again, stand firm in your salvation. Gather yourselves together because one shall chase a thousand, two shall put 10,000 to flight. Where the two or the three are gathered. This is God. This is the word of God. Where the two or the three are the gathered. There I am in the midst. God is saying, come on, pull back together. Stand firm. No, but because the spirit of love lawlessness is in the land and because we do not want to believe the truth we want to be told oh it's okay you're still getting the word you're sitting on your sofa you can still listen to bishop preach bishop still preaches a good word you don't have to go down to the church you can sit there with your coffee in one hand and you know and your remote in the other and you can still have a great kitty rumpus no you cannot no you cannot no, and because you have spoken and because the spirit of lawlessness is already at work here 
and you have convinced yourself through the spirit of lawlessness that it's okay to be doing what you're doing. The Bible says that because they would not believe the truth, here it is, I am not lying to you, I'm telling you seriously, that because, verse 10, because they refuse to love the truth and so to be saved, therefore, verse 11, God sends them a strong delusion so they may believe what is false. Hello, it is false to think that you can sit down and use your remote and go to church. It is false. It is not true. The devil is telling you a lie. That's not the way it is. It is false to believe that you can garner from, from, I know, I know. All right. Ooh, Sala, and take a breath. I am not nagging you but I'm seriously not wanting you to believe a strong delusion. I don't want God to give you a strong delusion. So I'm trying to encourage you to stand firm in your belief. Paul said to the Thessalonians and the Philippians, those things that you've seen us do and practice, you practice, we gather ourselves together. Stand firm in your gathering. We practice love and faith and peace. Stand firm in your love and your, stand firm, don't give up. Things are going to be rough, but stand firm. Yes, you may feel a little overwhelmed every now and then, but for goodness sake, I mean, who doesn't feel overwhelmed every now and then? Get over yourself. It is what it is. Get yourself up and stand firm in your spirit. Speak to the situation that, 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 that confronts you and let God do what he needs to do through his word. But we cannot give up. We cannot just, you know, throw up the towel and just move on with life and, no, no, no. Jesus Christ, when he was on the cross, ah, uh, when Christ was on the cross, one of the thieves, one of the, the robber persons, one of the guilty people on one side of him said, listen, man, you claim to be the son of God and you're up here on a cross being crucified with us. Why don't you save yourself and save us? Why don't you do this? Why do you allow these Roman soldier people to be doing this to us? Why are you hanging up here bleeding out? Why are you hanging up here while a man sticks you in the side for, for water and gall to come out? Why are you doing this? Why are you sitting there groaning in pain with a crown of thorns on your head? Why are you doing this? You can call the angels and you can get us off of this. And not only can you get us off of this, you can get us into heaven. You should just get down you know jesus for, for crying out loud just get down and get us down too and if jesus was not in the right place in his spirit recognizing the purpose and the will of god in his life <laughs> oh my god but instead he stood firm in spite of the pain of the thorns on his head in spite of the nails through his hand and feet, he stood firm. In spite of the sword that pierced his side with water gushing out, he stood firm. Now, I keep saying this over and over again. If Christ could have stood firm while they gorded him, while they ridiculed him, while they spat on him, while they tore his garments, while they beat him with how many stripes, if he could have stood firm so that you and I could have the liberty we have today, the liberty of salvation, then do you not think that you can stand firm in the trial that you're going through? In the big picture, just, just com in, com in terms of comparison, it, within the big picture, what are you going through that is anything like having a crown of thorns crammed into your skull? What are you going through that you cannot stand firm? What is it you're going through that the devil is telling you that you can just give up and just walk and just not, not be holy or not be forgiving or not be loving? Why can you not stand firm in love? Why can you not stand firm in peace? Why do you have to be at war? What is the contention? Why the confrontation? Ten story in one. I was talking to my daughter yesterday. She came home, you know, the usual, how was your day thing and all of that. And she said, you know, two members of staff had a fight. I said, did what? They had a fight on the job. Now, I said, now what in the world could push 
someone to the point on the job in uniform in front of the whole world to break out in fisticuffs. I mean, fighting, punching, stabbing at each other with pens and that kind of thing. What? Why could they not have stood firm in patience and in reconciliation? Why? Here's the thing. That's what the devil wants from us. He wants us to just break loose. He wants us to, to, to let the flesh take control. He wants us to be in disagreement. He wants us to be at war. But Paul is saying to the Philippians, my friends, stand firm in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. Do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Stand firm. Paul is saying to them, listen to me, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as first fruits to be saved through sanctification. Stand firm. Whatever trial you're going through, God is sanctifying you through it. You're being cleansed. You're being renewed. Yes, man. You, people are trying your temper and trying it, but God is sanctifying. What does sanctifying mean? He's cleaning you up. He's changing your persona into someone that he wants you to be like. God is making you who he wants you to be through sanctification by the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is cleaning you up. Stand firm. The Holy Spirit is purging you of the self that becomes angry over the least little thing. Stand firm. The Holy Spirit is teaching you to keep your mouth shut when you should. Stand firm. The Holy Spirit is sanctifying you through the purging of what's in your heart, the bitterness, the resentment. Oh, they did me this and that. I'll never, I'll never let them forget it. God is sanctifying you through that. Now stand firm as he sanctifies you. Why? Because through his Holy Spirit and your belief in the truth. Do you still believe the truth? Do you still believe the truth? Do you still... My Bible tells me that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Do you still believe in Jesus Christ? Do you still want to be like him? Then stand firm. Christ stood firm through the testings, through the people trying to kill him. <laughs> they wanted to kill him. He had to disappear out of their sight at one time. Through the people trying to make him king before he was, before he was even to have um, exposed who he really was. He stood firm. He didn't allow ego to tell him, oh, look, they realize that I'm the king. Hey, let's get kingly around here. Let's get, you know, yeah, pass me a crown right here. Jesus did not. He didn't expose himself before time because he knew that God had a right time for everything. My friend, if you're listening to the sound of my voice, whatever you're going to through, stand firm. God has a right time for everything. You may be looking at others and saying, but oh, everything working out for them. That's the right time for them. Stand firm until your time comes. And look, I, I've been praying for healing and now sister so-and-so got healed and I'm not healed. Stand firm. Firm means standing flat-footed. Set your foot down. Stand up strong. Be solid. Do not be, don't, don't let the wind of doubt and fear start rocking you from side to side. If you're praying for something and it hasn't yet happened, my friend, God has a right time for everything. Jesus Christ recognized that. When they were trying to make him king before time, when they were trying to expose him for who he was, there were times when Jesus Christ healed people and he's, he would say to them, tell no man. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah. In the New Testament, he would say to them, tell no man about this. Don't tell them because he knew that there was a right time for him. And as he waited for the right time, he stood firm. I want to tell you this. You know what standing firm means? Standing firm means like the prophet said, Isaiah. Standing firm means they that wait upon the Lord. Sometimes the waiting is hard. I'm telling you that. 
Sometimes it's hard to stand firm. Sometimes it's hard to hold on. Sometimes it's hard to know that I need to get out of this situation, but God is keeping me in it. Sometimes it's hard to keep a job that you really don't want to be. Sometimes it's hard to be in a church where you think you're being tested and tried. Sometimes it's hard to be in a family where you think that nobody has any gratitude for anything you do. Sometimes it's hard being a mom. Please. But stand firm. Sometimes, you know, you just want to pack a bag. You just want to pack a bag and move out. Mm -hmm. But my friend, stand firm. For God has got his reward waiting for you. The, 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 whatever the situation is that you're going through, you are being sanctified by the Spirit of God as you stand firm. Don't let the devil tell you that you've been in this too long and then you start na 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 in your ears. No, just understand that whatever you're going through, as you stand firm in that situation, God's Holy Spirit is sanctifying you by the Spirit and your belief in the truth. Hold on to what you believe in. I know the devil, you know, has ways of pulling in doubt and fear and, and pulling in the tired spirit. You know, but you know what? Sometimes all we need is a rest. You want a break? Take a break. Yeah. Just take a break. Just take a break. Sometimes we, our, our, our patience becomes thin and we want to give up. Not because we want to give up, but because we need a rest. We need a break. So if you, are, you feel that you're at the end of your tether, you've just about had enough and you're about to give up, can I encourage you today? Don't give up. Stand firm. Hold on to your salvation. Hold on to your beliefs. As Paul says, practice those things which you have learned. Do not let the devil stop you from practicing the gathering of yourself, from practicing the holiness of God, from practicing the love of Jesus Christ, from, from practicing a compassionate, the bowels of compassion. Don't let the devil stop you. Stand firm in your beliefs and in the practices that God has given to you. As Paul said to the Philippians, you know what? Here, we know that we are travailing. We are straining toward the goal. Oh my God. Paul says, I move not that I have already obtained this or I'm already perfect, but I press to make it my own. In the pressing, stand firm. Don't give up. Yes, sometimes we have to press, but stand firm. And when you stand firm, oh my goodness. Here Paul was saying, sometimes even the very people that we minister with, the people we are close to, the people we are locked in together with. Look at verse 2 of Philippians 4. And you will see the here that Paul was encouraging and exhorting them to try and make peace with these two women who are in a disagreement. I entreat Yudoa and I entreat Sintachi to agree in the Lord. In other words, when you're standing firm, you may be in disagreement with people in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Pastor, my flesh can't take this. Pastor, me and that person cannot agree. Pastor, so you cannot agree with them in the flesh? That's okay. You don't have to because the flesh is always there, you know, kicking up. But agree in the Lord. Stand firm in the Lord. Stand firm in agreement in the Lord. These two women obviously had a disagreement. And Paul was saying to them, saying, yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my workers, my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. These women needed help in their disagreement to stand firm. Come on now. We don't have to always agree. But we do have to stand firm. We don't have to always see things eye to eye. But I'm encouraging you, stand firm. Marriage, mm -mm. you don't always have to agree. But you do have to stand firm in that love. Yes, don't hesitate. Don't rock to the side. I'm encouraging you today, whatever situation you're going in, if it's sickness, if you're laying today on the bed of sickness and you're discouraged, may I encourage you? Please do not be discouraged. This body will be sick sometimes. But as you lie there in your sickbed, remember the grace of God. 
remember what God has taken you through before because I'm sure you must have come through some things before and lean on the sanctifying grace of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you're having thoughts of things that are not going well and your mind is tormented. May I ask you, let the mind of Christ be in you. Stand firm in the mind of Christ. Recognize in the attitude of Christ that God will never leave you nor forsake you. Recognize that Jesus Christ, when he was pushed to give up, he recognized that the will of God was paramount in his life, that it was critical that he allowed the will of God to take complete control. And so he said, Father, if it be possible, I can't stand firm in this anymore. Make this cup pass. But then he said, but not my will, but you will be done. Stand firm. The flesh will sometimes, as you can see here, that the two ladies were disagreeing. They had concerns and challenges. But Paul was saying to them, let them agree in the Lord. That is how we stand firm, by agreeing in the Lord. And he said, let us work. We have labored side by side. Stand firm. Because at the right time, God is going to not just release you from whatever you are involved in, but he's going to come and reward you for having stood firm. I think today that, you know, sometimes in this day and, day and age, in this day and age, it is so easy to give up. I see it all the time. It is so, people have such weak characters today that, you know, I don't know what it is. I don't know if we have stopped teaching people to, to hold strong or, or um, I don't know. It just seems to me that in times past, people were stronger. They were, their, their characters were stronger. Now, um, you know, I don't want to beat up on the now generation. I really don't. I don't. That's not my intention. My intention is to encourage you that whatever you think you cannot do, you would be surprised. Hold on. And yes, you can do it. You can make it. You can hold on. We don't have to give up. We don't have to throw up our hands. God's Holy Spirit in us, sanctifying us as we believe in the truth, will keep us standing firm in the word, in the spirit of God, in the practices of faith that we have learned. As Paul said, you have learned the practices from me. Paul said, walk in them, practice them. Those things you have seen and heard and watched me do, practice them. Stand firm in them. Do not give up on them. Stand firm in them. And at the end of the day, the Lord God of all peace and all grace will keep your hearts and mind through Jesus Christ. And as he said to the Philippians, that yes, that the God who sees excellence in us, worthy of all praise, the, um, all those things that are honorable, as you stand firm, whatsoever things are honorable or just or pure, if there be any great, great um, anything worthy of praise, think on these things and the God of peace will be with you. As you stand firm, the peace of God will settle your heart. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, someone, Lord God, is slipping today. Someone's feet are on the sand instead of the rock and their feet are slipping. Slipping in love, slipping in patience, slipping in grace. I pray today that you'll reach out and hold that person's hand and pull them out of the mire of slipping. Place them back on the rock, solid rock, the truth, Jesus Christ, that they will stand firm in that which they know in you, standing firm in the graces of the Holy Ghost. I pray, God, that they will not give up. Someone today feels like giving up. But in Jesus' name, we pray and we ask God that you will reach out now and touch them. Reach out and retrieve their soul from the, 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 the valley that they are in. Touch them now and lift them up to another level. Place their feet on solid ground. I pray, holy God, that whether it's sickness, 
whether it's death, whether it's grieving, whether it's just a, a, a feeling of anxiety and discouragement, whether it's that they have just about had enough and are just ready to give up. I pray that your Holy Spirit now will minister comfort to your, your people's heart, will minister grace to them, and will remind them that you are an on-time God. You are never too early. You are never too late. You are always on time. And that they will hold on, wait upon you, renew their strength until the time at which you set, Lord God, to step in and to lift them out of that tribulation. I pray that our feet will be on the solid rock and that we will not give up. Father, touch the people's heart today. Touch the heart of your son and your daughter. Touch the heart of your son as he lays there in his sick bed. Touch the heart of your daughter as she bows our, her head in despair. I pray, God, that right now you'll stretch forth your hand. Place your hand on the head of that daughter of Zion who has bought and found herself in despair. I pray that you lift that head. Remind her that you are the glory and the lifter of her head. Lift her head. Straighten the back. Father, Sucker that daughter of Zion and put her on a path, Lord God, a firm path, a firm path that will strengthen her. I pray for your son who is discouraged without a job. I pray for your son who is giving up. I pray for that person who's going through a very bad divorce proceeding right now. I pray that you strengthen their heart. I pray for that son or that daughter who's going through bankruptcy. Oh God, I pray for that son or daughter who's completely broke and does doesn't know where another scent is coming from. I minister, Lord God, your provision in their life right now in Jesus' name. I pray for that mother who does not have breakfast for the children for tomorrow. She only sees today. But Father, I pray you'll remind her that you are already in tomorrow and the provision for her and the children have already been made by you in the tomorrow. I pray, God, that you'll help her to stand firm today as you make provision for tomorrow. Oh God, oh God, oh our God, oh, step in, step in, secure our feet as we stand firm on you in our belief that you are our rock. You're the solid rock on which we stand, Lord, and we will not lose our footing today. I pray, Father, for those young persons who are looking to you, but are being dragged aside and distracted by the devil. I bind, Lord God, the spirit of addiction that is trying to overtake our young people in games and in substances and in drugs. Oh God, I bind the power that it's yielding over them right now. And I pray in Jesus' name that you will pull them back to stand firm in you. Oh, my Father in heaven, I speak to the marriages, oh God who are struggling, the marriages, the partners who are moving this way and that way. Oh God, who are being, being pushed about by the wind, oh Jesus, of disagreement, the challenges that are too much for them. Father, remind them that nothing is too much for you. I pray that you'll again relock the love that they first found. I pray that that marriage will now be rooted and grounded in you. I pray, Father, that the light of forgiveness and the light of love and the glory, Father, of an unconditional love may find its way into that marriage again. Father, I pray for that relationship between that mother and that daughter, that mother and that teenage daughter who are going through rocky times, who are going through misunderstandings. I pray, Holy God, that you will send forth your, the wind of your peace. Send it forth, Lord God, and soothe their spirit and help them to stand firm in you. God, we bless you today. We thank you for all that you're doing. We thank you that even as we bow our heads, we know you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think or imagine as we stand firm in you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Saints, don't give up. Don't give up. Ain't no give it up. Got to go on. Yes, no giving up. Stand firm in the Lord. He's coming to your rescue. Oh, yes, he is. 
is coming to your the angels have already gotten their their job order they've already been dispatched you just stand firm they're on their way i'm telling you this jesus christ has already paid the price and so you don't have to worry all you have to do as paul said is that pray rejoice and rejoice and pray and pray and hold on and stand firm the angels have got your ticket they're on their way you know jesus christ when he was going to lazarus's tomb the people there were i mean just imagine the people on the other side of the town who had already seen lazarus dead who had already buried him they had already spoken earth to earth ashes to ashes dust to dust but yet jesus was on his way coming down to say come forth yes do not be startled by what is going on around you stand firm Jesus is on his way. The angels have been dispatched with your work order and the Lord's provision is already been spoken into your life. God bless you today. As we leave you from this platform, please be reminded that we are here every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 12 to 1 and for on Wednesdays from 1 to 2. And please be reminded that you can get all the information that you need on our website www.faithtempleaog.org I, I stress today I stress to you do not be shaken stand firm God is on his way he will do what he has to do to make sure that no one can laugh at the God you serve amen I'm here again Lorraine Chisholm the pastor of Green Heights Assembly of God on behalf of my Bishop Bishop Conrad Pitkin let me say it's been a pleasure being with you today and I pray that God's grace will constantly constantly be with you and surround you and that you will be a blessing as you stand firm in your God he cannot be shaken he cannot be moved and the same thing applies to you have a wonderful day and be blessed my savior, my redeemer, my restorer, rebuilder, rewarder to all like you do I give my praise only a God like you. And set me upon the solid road Only a girl like you When the world was crying out for a savior You showed up Only a girl Only a girl like you When I lost hope You were there right beside me Only a girl like you My God To only my maker my Father, my Savior, Redeemer, Restorer, Rebuilder, Rewarder, to only God like you, do I give my praise. Let all the other Fade away when my God says I have life, I have life. All the other names fade away when the Lord says I'm healed, I know I'm healed. Let all the other names fade away because I walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, yeah, let all the other names fade away when I see my. Sickness.
I'm not the 